Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar, the new workplace currency, the top 10 soft skills. I can't wait to dive into this topic and I have so much to cover with you today. I was just looking at my script, which is a four, five pages long. <laughs> I usually have three, so I have a lot to share with you today but it's great information. So I hope you can stay on until the end. That would be awesome. Welcome everyone, come in, say hello. Yes, tell us where you are located and hopefully you're all doing well. So for today, what I wanna cover during this webinar is why the top, uh, the seven uh, top skills, 10 top skills, have become so prominent this year as we move forward. I also want to share with you, of course, what are the 10 top soft skills that you need to develop? And last, what's the plan? How are you going to approach these? So I think this is really good timing for us because it is early March and we're just getting into the new year. So great timing and we'll talk about how do you write a specific plan? How do you figure out which skills you need to develop out of the 10, and then how are you going to actually execute on that? So that's the roadmap that I wanna to follow today. And then we will have Q&A. As you know, if you've been on our webinars before, we have about 40 to 45 minutes of education, and then we have Q&A. But you can post your questions anytime during the webinar as well. Uh, let's see what else. We will send you a replay link. So if you missed out for any reason or you just want to hear this again, you will have that access. So are you ready to get started? Uh, I was so excited when I saw this headline pop up in a newsletter, an industry newsletter in my inbox. And immediately I had to read that article because this is our area of expertise, teaching soft skills, the intrapersonal, interpersonal, and we've been doing that since 1990. They did take a little bit of a step back during the pandemic because of course then tech moved forward and came on strong. And we're still working on those skills today. But the headline in the Forbes online recently published article, it said the new workplace currency, top 10 soft skills for success in 2024. So why are they mattering more than ever before? I have five different reasons for you. So the first one is the most important. We are in a world of automation. We are in a world where AI has infiltrated our workplaces and it's on the rise. And so the unique human capabilities, our soft skills are going to become more important. Your soft skills are what are going to set you apart from AI. And so you're going to need to continue to demonstrate those soft skills to differentiate yourself. So I think, like I said, the time is perfect for this. Uh, second, these skills enable you to navigate the nuances of the workplace dynamics. Um, I find the workplace fascinating. I always have since I got out of high school. And what I'm fascinated by are the dynamics that take place in the workplace, the people dynamics, the communication dynamics, the relationship dynamics. I mean, that's what the workplace is all about, correct? Business is about people. And so how we interact and our dynamics are very important. That's where the soft skills come into play. Uh, next, of course, for executive and administrative assistants, mastering these are crucial because you are the hub. You are the, the liaison. You are the one who connects your leaders and your team with the other people in the organization or outside the organization. That requires excellent people skills. 
The next reason why they are becoming very important again and coming into the forefront is these will significantly, significantly, I don't know why I can't talk this morning, seriously. <laughs> Maybe I need that second cup of coffee, so sorry. I'm probably just very excited about this topic, but they will enhance your professional value. As I said, this is where you can differentiate yourself from AI. This is where you differentiate yourself from other administrative professionals or others in the organization as well. When all things are equal, your skills, your attitude, your professional demeanor, what sets you apart? It will be your soft skills. And last, these will help you prepare for future challenges. And when we're talking about the, the soft skills, these are resilience and managing change and your ability to adapt. And those are the skills that will help you navigate the future. And also, I will say it will help you navigate today. I don't know if you feel this way, but I know we live in a world of constant change and it's not even day by day anymore, day to day, not even hour to hour, it's minute to minute. So we live in a world of disruption and your people skills are really important, your soft skills. So now that we've laid that foundation, let's get into the top 10 that were identified by Forbes magazine. And as we go through these, I would like you to think about which of these do you need to develop this year? Which ones do you need to either start developing because you haven't focused on them at all or maybe you need to take them to the next level and really upskill. So that's what I would like you to do. That's your job as I go through the 10. So the first one, strategy skills. So it's interesting that this was number one on the list and I love it because the last over the last year, I have been teaching assistants about strategic thinking. I've held many sessions for clients or uh, just individual webinars, open sessions about strategic thinking. So I've been talking on this a lot. We also just added this into our Star Achievement series. So knowing the difference between tactical thinking, which is what you do every day where you're checking off your to-do list versus strategic thinking. So strategic thinking is it takes place in the future. It's when you're thinking about the future, you're seeing how things need to connect. Um, it's the holistic view of things. Strategy is also about setting goals. So it's interesting because, um, and I hate to keep bringing this up, but it's true. Our Star Achievement Series, we have full day modules that have to do with strategy. What is the strategy part of your job? How do you strategically position your brand? How do you strategically position your conversations to create win-win you know, events? So strategy is very important for you to work on this year and learn. It's not just for leadership. Number two, this is one probably everyone needs to work on, negotiation skills. Have you really thought about how many times you are in a position to negotiate as an assistant? You know, when I think back to my career as an assistant, I was reflecting on what were the types of situations that I encountered where I needed to negotiate. But also now teaching and working with assistants and thinking about the work that you do, I wanted to give you some specific examples as to when you need to negotiate or where you should negotiate. Maybe you're not even doing it. So one, I thought negotiating prices and contracts with vendors. I know that is something Malia does in our office. Malia works with a lot of different vendors and uh, different kind of the contracts that she has to view. So that's a skill she needs. She needs to know how to negotiate with these people and try to get us better pricing. 
Another area for assistance or anyone is to negotiate salary increases, right? That's an entirely other subject, a different subject. I was also thinking how you're always negotiating calendars, correct? You've got to negotiate the times um, and being able to coordinate with multiple people. And maybe you're negotiating with other assistants as to which time works best for their leader and, and what time works best for your leader. And you're negotiating, you're going back and forth. Well, how about this date? Oh, no, that doesn't work for Joan. And Malia will say, well, how about this date? And the other person will say, well, that doesn't work for Maggie. What about this date, right? You're negotiating dates. There are, what other ideas do you have for where you might apply negotiation skills? You could negotiate your workload with your leader or the team you support. Correct? So that's another area of negotiation. The third top soft skill is persuasion. Now we've been teaching persuasion skills uh, probably since 2008 at least because I introduced those in our world-class assistant course. And so to help you understand the difference with between negotiation and persuasion, while negotiation works for the aim of enabling both parties to reach an agreed outcome through mutual compromise, persuasion is useful to get the other person to agree to your side. So they are different. Now they might, persuasion might involve some negotiation. But persuasion is where I'm really trying to convince you. So I'm thinking, you know, the assistants who have to persuade their executives to send them to our conference or persuade them to support their training and development with some other different kinds of programs. Um, we, we persuade, again, maybe you're going to want to persuade your leader to have more one-on-one -on -one time with you. It isn't a, you don't want to negotiate it. You want to have more one-on-one -on -one time. So you have to convince them and sell them. It's really interesting when I'm teaching persuasion skills, because I'll open that session by saying assistants don't see themselves as salespeople. But you have opportunities every single day to be a salesperson. And you need to learn how to persuade. So that's an advanced competency. And I would encourage you to develop in that area. Uh, and I, there's, there are so many areas that I can share with you as to where to persuade. But I know I want to keep moving because we do have a lot to cover today. Presentation skills. You don't have to be a speaker to learn presentation skills. Again, I was shocked this was on the list. In fact, nine out of the 10 soft skills identified by Forbes, we have been teaching for years. So I was extra happy to know that we have been on target with training assistance. But presentation skills, um, in teaching presentation skills, I would always tell assistants, you're on stage every day. The workplace is your platform. I know you're not at a podium, you're not on a stage, maybe once in a while, but your workplace is your stage. You are always on stage, whether it's the virtual world or it's in person. So I've always felt that these skills were very important. And you have to be able to get your audience's attention. It's even more difficult today because we are very distracted, correct? People have a lot of distractions. We have a lot of texts popping up on our phones, instant messages. People are interrupting us. Uh, you've got all your meetings. So it's more important that you develop presentation skills. And what do I mean by that? It's knowing how to communicate communicate your ideas, knowing how to communicate in a way that it gets people's attention. 
and get them away from the distraction. It's uh, so this isn't about formal presentations and not that it wouldn't cover that. But like I said, it's just every single day. How are you presenting yourself to your executive? Can you command their attention or are they distracted when you try to speak with them? It's those types of things. And then the article, of course, focused on too, as we're moving into, and we are in the hybrid uh, world, correct, and a lot of virtual. So your presentation skills in the virtual world, meaning just how are you showing up at meetings and training? You don't even have to be the speaker, but you're presenting yourself. But when you do speak, when you do participate, are you articulate? Do you look in the camera? Do you smile once in a while? Do you use energy or are you very vanilla and blase? And so you get looked over, okay? So that's the fourth. The fifth, number five, critical thinking. So critical thinking is a major component of strategic thinking and decision-making, but they're not the same. So keep that in mind. It's not learning one or the other. There are differences. And so you want to develop critical thinking. So uh, quickly, to think critically, you need to carefully gather and analyze facts and use your observations and sound judgment. So when we're cr doing critical thinking, it's not about our feelings you know, how we feel about something. It's we've actually, we've done our due diligence, as it says, you're gathering facts to back up what you think. You're analyzing those, uh, the information that you've taken in. And then from that point, you can make decisions or you can make recommendations to others. So how often are you applying critical thinking? definitely an area to develop. And even if you are doing, if you are good at these skills already, maybe you're saying, oh yes, I've got that covered. I've got that covered. We never have everything covered. I'm learning every single day and I've been in the workplace 53 years and I teach these skills and I'm still learning about them and I'm going deeper and deeper. So that's what I want to challenge you to do. All right, we're going to pause here for just a moment. One thing I forgot to tell you we are going to do today is give away some of my books. So that'll break up our webinar a little bit and add some fun. And I also think this is very appropriate because all my books are based on the soft skills. So Malia, let's do two right now. We'll give away two oh. and then a little in a little while we'll give away two more. Okay. So the first book I want to give away is underneath it all how top tier executive assistants create a competitive advantage and who's our winner our winner is valerie fisher valerie congratulations <laughs> i'm sorry i'm checking the chat here malia it's so interesting because <laughs> uh, i'm still just seeing all the hellos i'm not seeing any oh, conversations that's weird and I know there's got to be conversations going on, but I'm not seeing any. Yes. That's really strange. Okay. I don't know what's going on, but anyway. All right. Another. <laughs> I want to see what you're all saying, though. There's another book. Joan's Greatest Administrative Secrets Revealed. <laughs> is going to go to Marie Rizzi. R-I-Z-Z-I. -Z -Z Marie Rizzi. All right. Congratulations, Marie. Yay, congratulations. <laughs> okay, I think I'm starting to see a few comments now. That's bizarre. Um, all right, so far we've covered five. I'll quickly recap them for you for the top 10 soft skills. Number one, strategy skills. Number two, negotiation. Number three, persuasion. Number four, presentation skills. Number five, critical thinking. 
All right, let's go on. Number six. This is probably one you don't think of. And I was surprised to see it on the list, but it makes a lot of sense. Mentoring skills. So I'm curious, do any of you mentor other assistants in your organization? Um, you can formally mentor. You can also, in a way, informally mentor. It doesn't always have to be where you're having structured sessions. But the article said why this is important is because mentoring demonstrates teamwork and collaboration and improves other skills such as patience and communication, which I agree, as you mentor others, <laughs> you will be developing all of those skills. All right, I love number seven. Again, something we have been teaching for years, um, not four years, for many years is what I mean, emotional intelligence. All right, I've got a couple bullet points under emotional intelligence. Well, first of all, how many of you have been attending any training on emotional intelligence, reading about emotional intelligence? Uh, is your company maybe offering those courses? If so, say yes, EI. So yes to EI. I am aware and I have been doing some learning on it. So it's actually the ability to understand and regulate our own emotions and also be sensitive to others. And um, so this is interesting. Like I said, we've been teaching this for many years and we have been following Daniel Goleman's uh, EI structure because he's really the creator of all of that. And so he talks about the four dimensions of emotional intelligence. And the first one has to do with, I know me. The second, I manage me. The third being, I try to know you. And the fourth is visionary leadership, where I really um, lean in to being a leader and a visionary. And also if I see a situation where there's conflict with others that I go in to mediate that. So again, being a leader. And the article said it's evident based on the World Economic Forums report that soft skills related to emotional intelligence are seen as highly desirable by employers, which I agree. Again, when all things are equal in terms of um, the skill sets and people's commitment to showing up to work, but emotional intelligence definitely will set you apart. So here are some key indicators that you have EI. Think about yourself a moment. How It's how well you actively listen and demonstrate empathy. Do you do that? It's how you respond and react to challenges, you know, using your emotional intelligence, how you view failure and your perspective on your professional growth and your development. All right, number eight, stay with me because we're going to get to how to add structure to this and how to determine, how to determine your plan, how to write your plan. So number eight is innovation. And so um, it's interesting because we've been teaching creativity to assistants for years. And then also getting to that next level of being innovative. So again, a little bit of a difference between the two, but it is important to um, use your creative muscle in the workplace to don't always accept the status quo in today's world. This is critically important. So it's thinking about how can I do this better? How can I do this simpler? How can I streamline this process? It's not just accepting what is or, or thinking, well, we've done it this way for years, so surely it's, it's fine. It's good. It works. Instead, ask questions, as I said, how can I make this better? Meaning better, 
How can I make it faster, more efficient? How can I articulate my message in a clear fashion? How can I convince others of implementing a new process? So it's the question mark, putting a question mark in your mind as you go through your day. Number nine, now this is one we don't formally teach, but I will say last year I did have to get into and teach business acumen um, to about 150 assistants in an organization. So number nine is financial management. And yes, as assistants, uh, I imagine some of you are, are managing budgets. I know Malia works on our conference budget. That's really, really important that we stay on budget, that we stay on track, that she manages that, that she understands, you know, the P&L and ROI and all these different things. So as an administrative professional, while you may not be managing uh, and getting actually in the nitty gritty of finances, it's understanding, you know, just having an, an overview. So I remember when I was a secretary working at Steelcase in the mid eighties in North Carolina, I worked with and supported the top executive, the general manager of that um, division and the CFO, our CFO. And so because I supported the CFO, I was, typing at that time, a lot of his reports, our quarterly reports, our, our big quarterly employee staff meetings, and we didn't have the technology we have today. And so it was cumbersome. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> and there were pages and pages of documents. So I had to, you know, just have that high level view and a high level understanding, not just typing a bunch of numbers or looking at a bunch of numbers, but really asking our CFO, what, what do these actually mean? You know, and so that's important for you to have awareness and learn some of the terminology, just the basic business acumen. You can Google that. <laughs> <laughs> and learn some of those common terms or ask AI. Chat will tell you everything. All right, let's move on. Number 10, the number 10 soft skill, resilience. Again, I have been talking about resiliency since 2016. Um, I believe it was 2016 was the resilient assistant. I don't know, we have a different theme every year, but I love the topic of resiliency. I believe it's the number one skill we all need to thrive in today's world, being resilient to what is going on in our world, being resilient uh, in your workplaces to the changes that are rapidly happening all the time, being resilient to what your leaders and, and other people throw at you and ask you to do as far as your workload. So resiliency is, a critical uh, skill to develop. And what's interesting when I teach resiliency, while we'll talk about the typical view of resiliency, which is the ability to bounce back after a setback, I teach proactive resiliency, meaning don't wait until something happens and then you try to develop the skill, practice, by being proactive, taking on responsibilities and challenges and tasks that are difficult for you so that you develop that skill of resiliency. You're putting yourself into those challenging situations so that you're developing the skill. So then when things come your way that you don't have control over, you've already been working at developing the skill of resiliency. So I hope that makes sense. So those are the top 10 for 2024, but I will say they're the top 10. They're gonna be needed forever, the rest of your life. As I said, I've been speaking on these for years, but um, there are good reasons why these 10 are now a focus for 2024. 
So let's get into it. You know now the 10. What are you going to do about it? Where do we begin? Because to create behavior change, we need to craft a plan. We need to clearly write our learning outcomes. I, this is a big area that I work with assistants one-on-one -on, -one on how to really articulate their developmental goals and how to craft them in a way that's measurable. So that's what we're going to dig into next. And then I want to just see where I am with that. Okay, we're good. We're good on timing. So is everyone else good? Again, it's hard because I don't see much in the chat. So is everyone doing okay? I want to double check before I move on. Yes, you all, is everyone good? Okay, so we're on crafting an actionable plan. The first step, of course, number one, write it down, self-assessment and identifying your skills gap or the areas that you want to develop. Again, it could be your desire might be to just upskill in a particular area in one of those areas that I mentioned. So different ways that you assess, first, obviously, self-assessment. Thinking about what are the things you struggle with? Do you struggle having difficult conversations with certain employees? Do you struggle delivering bad news to people? Do you struggle juggling all your priorities and your tasks? Do you struggle being assertive? in the workplace. So you need to think about where am I not being as effective as I'd like to be, or maybe in which areas am I working that I would like to be more confident. I would like to know how to approach a situation in a better way, in a better fashion, in a way that I get results. So taking that time to reflect on you and I, part of that, too, is admitting what you need to do better. Because sometimes people will look at themselves and say, well, I, I've got that down, I've got that down, I've got that down, you know, I'm good. But we all have areas we can improve. The other part of the assessment is getting input from your executive or the people you support. That's a really important piece because when we are called in to do training of administrative professionals, it's because the executives or the leaders have identified areas that they see need developing in their executive and administrative assistants. They see those gaps. Some of them are big gaps and some of them are smaller gaps. And that's how we determine the kind of training that we're going to implement and the kind of training I'm going to design and the topics I need to cover and how we're going to make that effective for the employees who will be attending our training. So don't be afraid to get that feedback from the people you support throughout the year. It's not about waiting for your annual performance review. You need to be tweaking these skills all along. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, then within number one, the self-assessment, prioritize your skills. So maybe you have six that you want to develop this year. What's your top priority? What's your number one that you want to focus on and really move in that direction and research? and see what classes are available to you and start doing it. So um, also if you prioritize and you have your six in your mind as to what you want to learn, as maybe you see things come through your inbox, maybe you see something come from Office Dynamics about a webinar we're doing on that particular skill, then you'll say, oh, I know that was on my list. That is something I, a skill I want to develop this year. And so then you can place that on your schedule. Number two, this is the big area. And I'm 
the very, very, very important piece. You've got to set specific, detailed, realistic goals. You've got to be specific. You just can't say, I want to be a better communicator. And I'll give you some examples. Again, I'm right now I'm going through this. I've got five executive assistants that I've been coaching for a couple months now, working with them as a group and one-on-one -on -one and going through their development plans and coaching them how to write that plan based on what they want to achieve. So this is the, this is the, the piece that's critical for you. The clearer your goal, the better chance you have of achieving it. It can't be vague. It cannot be fuzzy. What do I mean? I'll give you an example. So this was from a coaching project I did last year, a two-day coaching with an executive assistant on site. And one of the areas for improvement on her development plan is effective communication. Well, what is that? That's really broad. What do you mean effective communication? So we had to, I had her write with my help action steps to ensure that she's going to be able to provide effective communication or have effective communication. So one action step, and I, this is what I taught her, choosing the right tool for the situation. If you want to be able to effectively communicate, you've got to select the right medium for it. It doesn't mean you email everyone. It doesn't mean you text everyone. You've got to be a little smarter if you want to be effective with your communication and think about what's your goal. What is your motive? What is your relationship to the person? Then you choose your tool. So that's one step. So then she would break that down. All right. How do I learn or what do I do to make sure I choose the right tool? Well, I just gave you those steps. The second um, piece is to increase social awareness. So what this had to do with was her paying attention to specific cues from others. That's the emotional intelligence. If I want to effectively communicate, I've got to pay attention to you and pick up any cues and adjust as I need to adjust. If I realize you're too sensitive about something I'm saying, I need to pull back. If I realize I'm speaking too slow for you, or I'm going too fast, or I'm using words that aren't making sense to you. So do you see that specific? It's clear, it's measurable. I went back and I could go back in 30 days and 60 days. These are all my notes. Were you doing this? How did it work? If you didn't do it, why didn't you do it? What barriers did you run into? Do you see it has to be measurable? You have to be able to define it clearly. Another one, this was really a great action under effective communication. Listen actively and be engaged. Do you see that's very clear? But under that, how are you going to do that? How are you going to ensure that you are actively listening, that you're not just sitting there hearing a bunch of words? So these are examples. Another example, getting better information. If you want to be effective in communicating, well, you've got to ask clarifying questions. You need to get background information. You need to, you know, get that clarification, as I said. So do you see, I hope you heard the difference because this is a gold mine. This is what creates your behavior change and allows you to plan the exact steps you need to take to develop and achieve your goals. So uh, within the detailed action plan, let me see, I want what else we've got. Of course, resources and tools is then once you get that piece in order, we talk about the resources. What are the tools you're going to use to help you learn, to help you develop or upskill? 
Remember, it's just about taking your, your skills to the next level. So obviously, these are some of the methods for learning. Formal training, of course, definitely, especially with soft skills. It, it's so amazing to me that people think you can learn soft skills by just reading. No, I mean, you have to practice them, <laughs> that they're soft skills. Okay, so yes, you read and you want to do your research and you can study and definitely you can go to Google, you can go use, use AI, right? But we'll get into those elements of practicing. Other methods of learning, how I learned a lot in my career and I still do today is by observing. So when I was a secretary um, and I worked in many different offices for various reasons, we moved because of my husband's career or I wanted to move up in the career. I observed people in the workplace, especially those in management. And I would watch and I would listen. And what, what did I admire in certain executives? What did they do? How did they do it? What did they say? How did they say it? What was their body language? I also learned what not to do by observing. So just observe. You can observe when you're in a virtual situation, like when you're in a meeting. Observe people. Who is articulate? Who is persuasive? How do they do that? So that's a great way to learn your soft skills. Along with that, assigning a timeline. So I'm still under the your action plan and the approach and detailing that out. But come up with a, a plan. So what we do is once action plans are written, I have a 30 day check in with the assistant. I have a 60 day check in and a 90 day. So we have found over 33 years, it takes about 90 days for someone to incorporate all these new actions and behaviors and habits to where they become natural and they don't have to think about them. So set your own timelines. Put a deadline date on by when you want to study something or learn something or develop that skill. And then, so I see it's 1042, so let's keep going. Um, number four, you've got to practice, 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 practice. Practice in formal training programs. That's what we do with all of our formal trainings. We just don't teach you what to do. You have to practice it. You have to script things out. You have to role play. And you get feedback from your trainers, your facilitators. Um, others, you could role play with other people. You know, um, you can practice through team projects and collaboration. You practice your soft skills when you're networking, when you're socializing, when you're interacting with others, but you have to practice them. Number five, incorporate feedback mechanisms. You need to get feedback, whether it's a coach. Some assistants will hire a coach to work with them so that they get those honest opinions. You can get feedback from your leaders, you know, bring them into what you want to do and ask for their feedback because again, others see things that we don't see in ourselves. And so we need that information so we know how to improve. Uh, Self-reflection, your own feedback. Am I less stressed because I have learned how to handle difficult people? I've learned what to say. I've learned to not let it bother me. So you can measure too by looking at your own stress levels and, and when do you feel really good because you're doing something really well because you develop that skill. Number six, the next step is, and it's part of what I was just telling you about, but tracking, like I said, your progress. So journaling is a great way to, to have a work journal and make notes about your progress and 
uh, areas you still need to develop. Actually, I was just thinking, um, right now we're working on updating our STAR Achievement Level 3 series. So there's three levels in the STAR. And in Level 3, at the end of each chapter, we have the attendees write their personal action plans. And we have them journal, and then we'll have them, then the next time we meet, we'll talk about what they wrote and their journals and so forth, so they could see their progress. So you can do that. And then a part of that too, celebrate your milestones. Don't forget to celebrate. Uh, that's the fun part, right? Share, let people know what you've accomplished and that will encourage you to do more. Plus the other part, your leaders need to know what you're doing behind the scenes. So something we've been asking lately is for people who have taken our online certification course, the Executive Support Series. For the past few years, we've been asking them to take a nice photo with their certificate and send it to us so we can put it on our social media and share their story. And so I was so excited recently, one of uh, the graduates, she got this whole professional, she had this whole professional photo session done. And she had these beautiful poses and did her hair and had her certificate and it's on our site. Um, and oh my gosh, I, it just stood out and I could tell that she took a great deal of pride in getting that certificate. It meant a lot to her. So don't be afraid to brag about your milestones. All right, let me see what I've got. Oh dear, two, two more, and then we'll do some giveaways and then we'll do Q and A. All right, uh, so you've got to integrate into your daily routine. I mean, integrate developing these skills into your daily routine. When you wake up in the morning, say to yourself, let me see how persuasive I can be today. Or remember, I'm on stage today, even though I'm not doing anything but going on a virtual call or virtual meeting, uh, or I'm meeting with my executive virtually, you're still on stage. So integrate, like I said, these daily so that they become habit, right? Think about the habits you have today, the things you do naturally. At some point, way back, you had to develop those and do them on a regular basis. And then number eight, this is the last step um, in, in helping your, yourself be successful is leverage support systems. This is where your, your mentors come into play, but your peers, your peer network. Like it's great we have the um, assistant exchange on our Facebook page and LinkedIn. And there's over 5,000 on the Facebook page who are very interactive and they support each other and they guide each other. And also, if you, you have a support system, help be accountability partners, hold each other accountable. Like when I'm doing coaching, that's what I am. I'm an accountability partner. And 30 days I follow up and I'll say, this is what you said you were going to do. Have you done it? If you haven't done it, why not? And get it in front of your face over the next 30 days. So that's another way that you can work with your, your peers is to support each other and encourage each other and also recommend resources to each other. Um, all right, I guess, wow, I had a lot to say there, didn't I? <laughs> so let, we're gonna go to Q&A um, really quick though, I do want to say my announcements first in case people have to, to go off because they're really, really important. So the first announcement, because we are talking about soft skills this whole time, um, we did want you to know about our STAR Achievement Series that is starting up later this summer. I'm going to be teaching the series virtually. And so to help you with that, we're going to give $300 off and that'll be level one and level two, and you can use code STAR300. And then the other piece I really wanna tell you is that April is going to be the month that we're gonna blow you away. We just pinned down 
all our events and uh, fun things we're going to do throughout April in honor of Administrative Professionals Week. And we're gonna kick it off early in April. And all I can tell you, it's gonna be magnificent and don't miss out. So check your inboxes because we will be making those announcements, um, I think later this month, and there will be a calendar on our website and everything. So, okay, questions. Oh, I have more books, don't I? But, oh dear, okay, really quick. I took my pen again. Okay. Uh, this is a collaborative effort of 249 assistants contributed to this book. That one's going to Barbara Young. I feel like I'm out of practice with our webinar, Malia, because we didn't do one. Let's see what yet. happens when you skip a month. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I need to not do that. I'm all tongue tied and I'm trying to cram everything in. Okay. Become all right. A circle. Look how pretty that looks with your top. Oh, oh, that up again. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is going to Nikisha. Sorry if I butcher this. Delu Deluhi. Nikisha right. Deluhi. I'll be emailing all the winners, so you don't worry. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> oh, Jen just commented really quick. I recently did a 360. Yes, those are excellent to use to find out and learn about your gaps. So good for you, Jen, congratulations. It can be scary, but it's really helpful getting insight from several people who know you and work with you. So that is one of the questions. What is a 360? What is the 360? So 360 uh, feedback, and this, this these go back 30, oh, 30 years. I don't know, they started with 360 degree. So 360 degree is all encompassing, right? All around us. So what it is, is it's um, an assessment tool that, and there's different kinds that will measure uh, how effective you are or will a measure. Uh, so if we were talking about a 360 for leadership, there's going to be a list of criteria of competency areas and actions. That assessment, might go out to 12 people or 15 people. The organization decides usually how many people will uh, provide that feedback. So that assessment goes out to a group of people on an individual so that you're not just getting one view or one rating from your immediate leader or supervisors, you're getting a much broader picture from a variety of people who have worked with you again internally or externally. So, you know, maybe you think of that as a little more fair <laughs> because again, it's not just the view of a couple people. We have we our administrative competency assessment that we have could be completed by several people, not just the executive on their assistant but maybe in some instances, an organization will pick eight other leaders to rate that assistant in these 19 key competency areas. And then from there, we know, the, we know what we need to develop and how to create our plan. Nice. Sorry, I was just pulling other questions. My apologies. No, that's okay. Um, Kathy would like to know if you've taken the STAR achievement course in the past, are you required to retake it? No. <laughs> However, you are not. But I will tell you this. We came out with a second edition last year. I spent months updating all the workbooks, the entire curriculum. Um, now, it doesn't mean everything was updated because a lot of those skills are soft skills and they haven't changed, but we updated, I updated the book to accommodate the new world we live in. And I've added, included and brought in the hybrid world if you're working virtually, remote, plus in person. So, and really dealing with a lot of the newer issues and challenges that we've been facing. So. It wouldn't be a bad thing to take it because the new content's phenomenal. Um, so that's all. 
Next year, early next year, we're going to offer level three because I'm working on that right now. So you might want to take level three in the future when we offer that. Yes. Yay. Okay. Um, let's see. Don is saying or asking, I noticed Joan is using soft skills again instead of power skills. Are they interchangeable? Yes. So thank you. You're smart. You've been paying yeah. attention. <laughs> yes, because you know, in the past year and a half, two years, we have been referring to the soft skills as power skills because I was reading about that in the training industry. And so even in the Forbes article, in that article, they did refer to the soft skills as power skills. Yes. So that it's the new, I guess it's a new term um, in that the soft skills are power skills. They give you that power that you need. So thank you for your question. <laughs> Yvonne wants to know if you have a recommendation for an, a book on emotional intelligence. Oh, goodness. Um, I don't. I mean, there's so many out there, but I, I would probably search books by Daniel Goleman, G-O-L-E-M-A-N, because he's the godfather of EI. Okay. Uh, Rhoda is asking how do you negotiate salary how do you negotiate salary when the company wants to give a percentage based raise to everyone raise to everyone pardon me now i'm doing it john i know i don't know what that was <laughs> this morning i was all tongue-tied i think i was just too excited so, <laughs> uh, so if the the company has established guidelines and percentages and levels and uh, scales, it's often hard to break through that. The only experience I had, and I did have the experience in a positive fashion when I was a secretary working at that organization in North Carolina that I was telling you about earlier, um, I did uh, I did my due diligence. I wanted a salary increase and a title change. I had been there about nine months, but I had also been in the profession for 16 years at that time. And so I felt that the corporate title they had for me was not really appropriate and conducive to the work I was doing and the role that I had. And I felt that the job was bigger you know, than what was given to me. So I wrote, I think it was like a five page document. I probably still have it somewhere in my inventory over here, my storeroom, but really justifying and doing my research and why I felt uh, a different title was appropriate, what that title was. I did research on um, national research and local research as far as salaries, uh, positions, I went through an entire list of the additional duties and responsibilities I had added. So like I said, I really did my homework. And in that situation, because we were at headquarters, headquarters in Michigan, they established all the protocols with titles and salaries. My executive though was convinced enough that he said, I will take it to corporate and see if we can get this change made. And they did. So, um, but that's probably a rarity because a lot of times, like I said, there are certain guidelines, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for that. But you better have facts as to why you think it's justified. Okay. All right. Uh, Lynn says she's currently set to interview for a position that lists dealing with difficult and individuals multiple times per day as part of the job description. What soft skills do you recommend should be highlighted when describing my expertise in this area? Uh, number one that came to my mind is being a good listener. Because when we're dealing with difficult people, it's normal and natural and me too. You, you just want to get fired up, right? 
and get defensive. And, but that doesn't work. Um, in fact, what we teach the, the first number one thing is to listen. Just listen to them um, and listen for understanding, not listening to argue with them, listening to prove why they're wrong or you're listening because you're thinking you're an idiot and you don't know what you're talking about. You're really listening to understand what's going on in their head. Uh, so that would be definitely a critical skill that you know how to diplomatically voice your opinion. Uh, that just came to mind because we're teaching that in one of our courses. And I was just looking at that the other day. How do you do that? Uh, with difficult people, it's another skill is assessing and creating win-win situations. So that, and that's part of the negotiating. You know, I'm willing to do this. If you're willing to do that, how do we come together? Patience is a part of that. Okay. Mark? <laughs> Sorry. And I'll say, oh, I mean, we could stay on five more minutes. If okay. Those of you who want to stay with us. All righty. Uh, Teresa wants to know, how do you deal with a mentee that you're trying to help, but then they go to a colleague that's not thriving, but will tell them what they want to hear? So as a coach, I would tell them, <laughs> I would tell them straight out, uh, but really it, it's in a nice way, um, but a firm way. If you're the mentor, mentors, our job and coaches are to tell our mentee things they don't want to hear. And so, like you said, letting them know that if they truly want to grow and develop and change, they've got to embrace hearing what they don't want to hear that when we go to people who are going to agree with everything or tell us oh that's okay you're doing a great job that's not where we're going to grow and so that person really is not being of value to you okay and, and so that's the framework or essence of the message right um Wendy's asking if there is a class on soft skills. Oh my God, there's a Jillian. So sorry, we did not uh, even get into that. I mean, I, I talked to broad, but every class we offer other than one now, because we just launched our digital efficiency courses this year, but I'm not teaching them. That's not my expertise. Every single class we offer are the soft skills. So we address probably over 100 soft skills, leadership, self-management, critical thinking, problem solving. Um, we cover the, the strategy pieces of setting your goals, how to collaborate. We teach teamwork, collaboration, building a partnership. We teach all facets of communication. So if you just go to our website, we have every single thing from A to Z, books, online courses, certification courses, micro webinars, you name it, we've got it because <laughs> we've been developing all of these materials for so long. Yes. Okay. I'm sending you to us first. <laughs> there are other experts in the areas of communication and you can research. Yeah. Do your all research. Kathy mentioned here, I'm burnt out, no ambition left, I'm not doing my best. I know me and I'm not me. Any suggestions? Um, number one, go easy on yourself because we all go through those periods where we're just, we're spent, we're done, even I do. And I notice when I'm like that, I need to, to pull back, not take on anything additional in your personal life or your professional life, be easy on yourself. Make time for doing things that you love. So what are the things that you do like to do, both at work, first of all? How can you do more of what you love at work? Uh, so you feed your soul, as I say. And then in your personal life, what do you enjoy? Do you like being outdoors? Do you like going for walks? Do you like 
um, spending time with your family. Do more of that. I also suggest reading, especially inspirational and motivational things, nothing heavy, just little tidbits, keeping quotes at your desk like I do. I keep this here. I had this for years. Whoops. And I just lost it, but it's here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so that's another way. Um, meditation, they say exercise. So just go easy on yourself and trust that your motivation will come back. Don't try to force it. Just let it ride and it will naturally come back. All right, one more should we take? Okay. I'm 800 on. So. There's so many. And I just want to say some of these questions are ones that, that I can manage. So I'll be emailing uh, the people who wrote these questions to us okay. um, later today so that you can at least get an answer because they're, you know, they're general questions that I can handle. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. Just one more. Um, books. Can you recommend books on critical thinking and persuasion skills? I had a feeling that I was going to get asked <laughs> about books. Um, I know off the top of my head. <laughs> I because I read I read such a range of not just books, but I read little tidbits in my industry magazines and so forth. Again, what I would do when I am looking though for a book on a specific topic, like confident communications, I wanted to do more research on that. I go to Amazon, I type that in and I look at the reviews and I look at um, obviously the content. I especially look at, is this a credible source? Is the author, everyone could write a book today. Anyone could write a book today and publish it on Amazon and that's it. You need to look for who's the credible sources, read their bios thoroughly, look at the content, is it going to cover you know, what you think you need? And then, like I said, read the reviews and then I'll, I'll get the book, you know, and I always find something of value, always. The, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I guess I could just keep talking, can I? <laughs> okay. Well, it, it's quite a meaty subject, but it's important. Yeah. So I just want to, I want to encourage all of you, don't let your soft skills go by the wayside. Yes, your tech skills are important, and that's why now we are offering those. We're realizing they are very important. These are your power skills, your power skills. So add them to your, your bag of skills and get a plan together. It's early in the year and just use this as your year to thrive. So thank you all. And remember, come back in April. We're going to have, I think, three or four webinars in April. Woohoo! <laughs> and lots of giveaways. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you were just showing you sitting there on camera. Oh, I closed it so that because I knew she was going to pop out. <laughs>